Hello team. Um, I have a strong feeling that I'm live now, so could you please just put in the chat if you can hear me? That'd be awesome. Thank you so much. All right. So today we are going to talk about rules for differentiation. And rules for differentiation is a very interesting, very interesting um, topic, I reckon. And um, it's probably the most outstanding thing that we'll learn in differentiation this year. It will give us a really good um, vantage point for how we do a lot of the cool maths and also um, how we deal with maths that's uh, questions for in differentiation, they're a little bit more tricky. Um, um, than the ones we're normally used to. Um, so yeah, let's have a go. So this is the topic, um, but how I'm going to do this is I'm going to, um, I'm going to show you a few questions, just normal differentiation, and then come back to some complexity and see if we can try to unpack it. Okay, so the first question is, let's try some differentiation. Okay, and my whole thing is, I don't want to overdo it. Okay, so question one, real nice, real basic, give it a go. How do you differentiate 2x squared, 2x plus 1 cubed? Okay, think about it, give it a go. Okay. Okay. Question two. How do you differentiate how do you differentiate two x plus one times three x plus three? I want you guys to think about it and then give them a go. Oh, hi, Dr. Hoffman. How are you? Perfect. Nice to see you here. Um, so you might think, oh, the first one's quite easy. All I need to do is multiply by the power, take one from the power, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Do you all agree with me that that is the answer? You could if you so wanted to, have expanded this. And once you've expanded, you could have tried to solve it. But it doesn't seem like the sensible thing to do, especially after we've learnt... No, um, Lucy, I think your answer was correct. Especially after we've learnt the bracket rule and we've learnt how useful that can be. Right? We could have expanded it, but we're not going to. But then this question here, I don't know how to do it without expanding. So I am going to expand. And so I'm going to go, well, that's equal to 6x squared plus 6x plus 3x plus 3. You can tell me if I'm wrong anywhere. Um, I typically make some mistakes, so I'd really appreciate it if you you made sure I didn't. And so now that I have a good function of f of x, the derivative is multiply by the power, take one off the power, multiply by the power, take one off the power, and the 3 multiply by the power, take one off the power. Okay, GC, I love what you're throwing out right now, except I haven't taught that yet. By by I haven't taught that yet is that's what I'm about to get to. So awesome stuff, but <laughs> I'm trying to get there. So jump in in about two minutes when I eventually ask for that. Okay? But you're no, you're right, but in this video I want to eventually get to there. So question three. 
I'm going to ask a slightly harder question. Um, what about if I asked you to do this? Differentiate this. Okay. So, yeah. So, so, and this is exactly what GC was saying, but I kind of want to get to why what GC is saying is useful to us. So I've got to a question where before I said to myself, this would be pretty bad to expand. Um, here we had to expand. And here, if I have to expand, I'm going to be in an in a awkward situation because this is really hard to expand. But all I've done is I can I can differentiate this and I can differentiate this, but I should be able to differentiate this without too much awkwardity. Like I feel it's 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 kind of easy to say, oh, you can't differentiate that, and then we stop and we're like, okay, so sad. Or it's I think kind of rude to say you have to expand it to differentiate. And so, in fact, there's this rule of differentiation that I'm about to show you. And I'm going to use different notation to the one GC used. Um, and I'm going to use some a bit of Leibniz notation um, because I feel like it. <laughs> um, product. Oop, that's not how you spell that word. Product rule. Okay. So, when you have when... You have your function f of x equal to two functions multiplied together, the first being u of x times v of x. Okay, why have I used those letters? Um, I'm about to skip some notation. So I'm going to now rewrite this whole thing, and I'm going to say your function of x is f equals u times v, okay? Um, I'm going to just leave out the of x parts, because I think it's just a little tedious, right? What we say is that, once again, f dash of x, which... I'm going to just, for the notation, we're going to write f dash. And it's going to equal, there's a special rule. It's equal to differentiate the first part. So u dash, then times the second part, then plus differentiate the second part, then write the first part. And that's very similar to what um, GC wrote. And in fact, it's exactly the same, but I've just used different letters. So I call this product rule. Differentiate the first, write the second, plus differentiate the second, write the first. Okay? Some of you might do it in a different order or write some other things. Um, or some of you might learn it. Differentiate the first, write the second, write the first, differentiate the second. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to argue which way is correct, but this is what I want to use. So the derivative is differentiate this, then write this, then differentiate the second thing, and then write the first thing. And typically, this is kind of a really useful trick. And whenever you have two things multiplied together and they're functions of x, if you use this, it will work. And so, for our example, I'm going to use f of x is equal to this thing here, which we have already done because we have it is equal to 12x plus 9 when we differentiate it. But let's try this rule. I'm going to say let u equal 2x plus 1. Let v equal 3x plus 1. And let's go. This is Leibniz notation somewhat. Um, what is u dashed? What is the derivative of u? Just 2. And what is v dash? That's just the derivative of v, which is 3. There could be a little bit better notation I could be using, but I'm going to leave that for a bit. And so let's write out what f dash is. 
f dash of x is equal to u dash times v plus v dash, which is 3, times u. Let's expand this and see what we get. Ooh, that's the wrong color. 6x plus 6 plus 6x plus 3. And I am not surprised that this is 12x plus 9, the same as what we got before. And this is called the product rule. So if you have two functions that are multiplied together, you can differentiate them by using this kind of grid. Your formula sheets might use slightly different notation. Um, we'll try and get it all back on track soon, but let's just use u and v for now, because I know that we've been using f of x for a lot of things, and your formula sheet um, doesn't use f of x as we do. Um, you might see, well, let me just write it. So your formula sheet might give you f dash, f dot g dash is equal to f dash g plus g dash f, right? Um, if you want to use that notation, go ahead. It's exactly what I've written about the v's and u's. Um, and then there's a bit of other notation. So let's just stick to what we know, okay? So let's try... f of x is equal to 2x squared, uh, I mean, 2x plus 1 to the power of 3 times 3x plus 1, okay? Let's give this one a go. And I'm just going to write my derivative thing. f dash x is u dash v plus v dash u. All right, let's see if we go. GC, are we happy now? Okay, does everyone sort of understand what I've done there? Guys, I'd like you to give this a go, and I'll just do a bit of talking and checking whilst you guys give this a go. Um, nice. Yeah, GC, sorry, I've used different notation. I didn't want to use G and H too quickly, because in your formula sheet, it uses F and G, and I thought it was weird to start using G and H instead of F and G, so I'd rather use U and V, okay? So, let's try this out. So, first off, I'm going to label what U is and what V is. So, U is equal to 2X plus 1 cubed, and V is equal to 3X plus 1. 3X plus 3, rather. Okay, then u dashed is equal to 3, 2x plus 1, times 2. That's to the power of 2 still. And then v dash is 3. Yep, yes, it's still the same thing. So, I've just done multiply by the power, take one off the power, then multiply by the derivative of the inside. So let's write out what f dash of x is. Differentiate the first, which was 3, 2x plus 1 squared times 2. Then write the second. Plus, write, um, differentiate the second, then write the first. Okay. Once again, I'll just color code this. This is u dash, this is u, this is v, and this is v dash. Okay. And so some of you might want to simplify, but you don't need to. I think, you know, we, we, we get used to simplifying in junior maths and maybe level one and level two. It's only, oh, sorry, that's not me to have squared. 
only because there's not much more to it. But after you've started using product rule and stuff like that, sometimes you make it look really different when you simplify. And so, you know, we don't really expect you to simplify as long as you've got the process down. Okay, so now I've been able to differentiate something gnarly like this using the simple rule. If I've got a product, it's u dash v plus v dash u. Um, and I think that's cool, and it's easy for us to remember. And, it's, and I mean, I'm going to quote someone who's iconic. Um, Iggy Azalea always says first things first, so always differentiate the first term first. Okay? You're like, Mr. Dharma, why does that matter now? It doesn't matter now, but it will matter soon. Okay, so shall we try another one like this? Try this. Okay, and I want to see your answers in the comments. Um, even if I've done it, just type yours in anyway. And so my my questions are e to the 2x times sine of 3x. Okay, so let's give that a go. What is the derivative of this going to be? And so, yes, you should have watched Tuesday's video before you came along, but let's see. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes and give that one a go. And if you have done that, I want you to do this one. So that's two questions for you to try, and this is the product rule that you're going to use. And so I'll just quickly write the product rule here. I might write it slightly differently. If u, v are multiplied together, put a u dash v plus v dash u. Okay? All right. Just going to write out what u and u dash are, and what v and v dash are. I'm going to do the same down here. v and v dash. Down to u and u dash. This is exactly how my teacher in high school taught me. And I think that's quite like important like to me that I, I lay it out like this. Yes, some people do it in their head, but I think laying it out is kind of important to me. All right. Okay, so we've got an answer from Eddie. Others of you, you know, you know, let me know if you agree or disagree, Eddie, um, but I will write my answer. Okay, I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, cool. So let's try that. So I'm going to just do u is e to the x, e to the 2x. So u dash is 2e to the 2x. And then once again, sine of 3x. I differentiate sine. The derivative of sine is cosine. And then I multiply by 3. So it's 3 cosine 3x. And I just need to plug this in. So f dash of x is equal to, differentiate the first. Then write the second. Plus, differentiate the second. Then write the first. That is it. Could I simplify? Probably. Do I want to? No. Why? Because I think the moment you start simplifying, it could make things a little bit awkward and, um, you know, make it a little bit messier. So I'm okay with this answer being like this. 
Oh, fantastic. So, awesome stuff, Lucy, Charlotte, and I'm assuming that's Max. So, well done. Let's try this one. U is equal to sine of 3x plus 1. U dashed is equal to 3 times cosine of 3x plus 1. V is equal to 3x plus 1 to the power of 3. And V dashed is multiply by the power, take one off the power, multiply by the derivative of the inside. And so, yeah, and so if dashed is equal to, differentiate the first, so that's 3 cosine. 3x plus 1, then write the second. Okay, just be very careful with your notation here, okay? The brackets, um, you know, I'm going to just stick a dot here to show that there's a distinction there, okay? Plus, now differentiate the second. 3 times 3 is 9, so I'm just going to put there. So when I say you don't have to simplify, you honestly don't, but sometimes 3 times 3 is 9 is worth doing, right? Times the first. Boom. And that might be my answer. Do I want to simplify it? No. Can you guys tell me if you got that? All right, so I'm just going to wait for your, your chat there, but I'm going to just leave this here for you guys to check. Okay. What about f of x equals 2x plus 1 over 3x plus 3? What about if there's a division? Right? If there's a division, yeah. Yeah, so if there is a division, you could possibly do some long division and make it look slightly different and then do it. And once again, that's the same kind of strategy as expanding, right? We know how to expand, but it's not always going to be the best way. Like, imagine if I complicated it by making the bottom like that, your long division is going to get real awkward and unnecessary. Right, so I'm not going to do that for now, but it's possible that I can make the denominator awkward and then you, you lose things like long division. And so, once again, this is called, ooh, that's meant to be the different color. Quotient rule. So this is when you have division. Okay, so when you have division, If f of x is equal to u of x over v of x, right? Then f dash of x Okay, and I'm just going to simplify once again. I'm going to write this um, u over v, then f dash of x is going to be equal to, okay, very similar thing. Differentiate the first, then write the second, but this time there's a minus. Differentiate the first, write the second, right? First things first, always differentiate the first thing, okay? And then differentiate the second. Write the first, and then, oop, wrong color, divide by v squared. Okay. Okay. So this one looks a little bit different, and I'm going to write it over here for some of you. The derivative of a fraction is u dash v minus v dashed u at another time. I don't want to do it today. 
Um, so those of you who are interested in explaining to me why that looks like that, you can come and talk to me about it in the skull. All right, so let's have a look at a question. Our standard question, let's try f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 over 3x plus 3. Once again, I practice great notation. Okay? U, U dashed, V, V dashed. It's not a sign of weakness to have good notation, team. And let me tell you this. Um, it is very important that you trust your maths. And if you need to use really good notation for that, you know, that's okay. So don't let anyone say to you, oh, you can skip all that if you don't feel comfortable with it, right? So you can, sure, yes, you can skip all of this if you don't need it. But because you write this out, it doesn't make you any less strong at being able to do it, okay? Where some people can hold certain things in their head, others can't. And that's okay. And so... I recommend good notation, if, and if you kind of, you know, you know, ever feel pressured to not use good notation, I don't know, man. Just use good notation. So here we go. Differentiate this. So two. So differentiate the first, then write the second. But this time it's a minus. Differentiate the second, then write the first all over the second one squared. The second one squared is just... Ooh, I, did, I made a mistake. This is meant to be... two x plus one. And then over the second one squared. All right? Okay. How nice is that? Oh, thanks, Jason. Sometimes we just need a bit of inspiration. You guys, for watching this, are inspiring me to make more of these. So kudos to you. You guys are real champions here. Okay, question two. I want to make it kind of interesting. Give this a go. Give this a go. Okay, can you also tell me if you got that right? And I'm just going to quickly write this down again just in case you need it. U dashed V minus V dashed U all over V squared. Okay, question three. Here we go, and we're going to do something I really like. 2x plus 1 over 3x plus 3 to the power of 3. Okay. My whole thing is I don't want to make maths hard for you, and so I don't need to give you examples that are super, super different, because you need to understand the idea first. Once you've understood the idea, you'll be fine. Thanks, Charlotte. Thanks, Ned. Ned. Are you sure? Sure, you're 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 doing this for the first time, mate. For some strong reason, I have a feeling that you did level three last year, and so I'm not surprised that you can still do this, Ned. There we go, Eddie. Thank you. Awesome stuff, and thanks, Max, as well. All right, let's see this. Okay. Oh, actually, I'm going to write out the next one so that you guys have a bit more time to think and I want to, I want some of you to tell me what's really interesting about this question. Ooh. Ned mate. <laughs> um here we go. So what's really exciting for this is some of you may have noticed that sine over cosine is equal to, what's sine over cosine equal to? Sine over cosine is equal to tan. So if you knew the tan one, you'd probably just knock this out already. But let's try it without it and see if we get the same answer. It will give me a bit of satisfaction. So 
So u is equal to sine x. u dashed is equal to cosine of x. v is equal to cosine of x. And v dash is equal to negative sine of x. We're going to do something wild. Let's go. Okay, so f, of, f dash of x is equal to, differentiate the first, so that's cos of x, then multiply by the second, minus, minus, differentiate the second. So minus minus makes a plus. So I've got sine of x, and then times by the first. All over the second one squared. Now, some little birdie told me that this top over here is cos squared plus sine squared. And it's all over cos squared. And if you go back to trigonometry, what's cos squared plus sine squared equal to? Cos squared plus sine squared goes to 1. So this is equal to 1 over cosine squared, which is equal to sec squared. Ain't that cool? It's on your table, but that's how you get it. The quotient rule of sine over cosine gives you the tan derivative. Now you know the tan derivative, you never have to do this again. But I think it's a fairly awesome thing to know. Who thought that was pretty cool? Okay. Once again, I'll just write this up here. U dash V. U dash V minus V dash U. All of the V squared. Okay, awesome stuff, Eddie. Kind of looks cool. Um, the rest of you, how you feeling? Should we give it a go? U is this, U dashed is 2. V is equal to this. And v dashed, which is something we've done before. I'm just going to write here 9 3x squared. Okay. Twas brill, G. Wow, I didn't know I was that gangster. Yo. Okay, so here we go. So f dash of g is equal to, differentiate the first, which is 2, write the second, minus, differentiate the second, which is this, write the third. all over, second one squared. Okay. If you so desire to simplify, I'll let you. Um, it becomes slightly nicer looking. Um, but I am not super overwhelmed, or I'm not super needing you to simplify it. If you do decide to simplify it, it will look kind of prettier. But for me, I'm not worried. Oh, Brilly G. Stands for brilliant, not G. Uh, okay. I thought we were just mixing up like some past English, like old English and formal English, like and slang English, like twas brilliant G. But you're like, no, it's just brilliant. Okay, thanks, mate. All right. So that is the product rule, and that's the quotient rule. So I'm just going to write them out again. Just check my answer for me. If you want to simplify, you can, but that's not what my focus is. So. Product rule. And I'm going to write it with this notation. U 
v differentiated is u dash v plus v dash u. And the quotient rule is when one function is divided by another function is once again u dash v minus v dash u all over v squared. Okay. These two are going to be what we use to go forward. Right? These are the notations that we use. This is how we go about doing a whole bunch of things. Product rule and quotient rule. Super, super useful for us. Okay. I'm going to leave these here for um, a couple of minutes. Um, um, I'm just going to field any questions that come up. And then if you're feeling comfortable, then I'm going to put up a few questions that are a little bit more challenging that use the product rule and the quotient rule with a bit of chain rule in the middle. Okay, and you're like, Mr. Dharma, what is the chain rule? Well, the chain rule is the bracket rule from the other day. It's just a little bit clearer with our notation. Um, but I'm not going to yet formalize the notation for chain rule um, because I think it still looks a little dodgy until we get some serious Leibniz notation. Okay? And so we're still going to leave this here. Um, so two minutes. And if you want to ask me questions, you can. And I'm going to give you a couple of questions. All right. If you are with me up till here, can you just, in the chat, say one thing that's interesting to you in, in what we've done so far? Just so I can tell how many of you are engaged and also sort of see who you are. It'd be really cool. Thank you, guys. Try. Okay. Sorry guys, my silence is me reading what you're typing. Um I forgot that you just hear silence. Um All right, here we go. Let's give me another one. Cosine of e to the x squared times sine of 2x. No, no, that's not question 2, that's question 3. Question 4 is, I'm not trying to make maths hard for you. I'm trying to offer you interesting maths questions. Okay, these are your four questions, okay? I'm going to leave them there for a bit. Um, if you think you know the answers, type them in or say yes you're done and in about 30 seconds I will look to write the answers out. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I want to show working or not um, because I think it'd be really cool for you to arrive at these answers um, and I think they'll be a good exercise for you not just me. Okay so I might just write the answers out. But if you would like working, please comment working, and so then I will give you working. Okay. Um, Jason, I'm not sure. Does that say I'm still hurt, but you forgot the T? 
or I'm still here but spelt wrong. Either which way I'm concerned. Um, and yeah, first, first function first, or first things first, always helps, okay? Because I can promise you quotient rules done wrong so often because either you forget the minus sign or you don't differentiate the first function first. And it gets a bit awkward. And ooh, I just noticed that on my thumbnail for this video, this is the notation I've used as well. So um, of course I would have used this notation. This is my favorite notation. But if you ever forget, it's on my thumbnail. So awesome stuff. Oh, okay. Here. Here, sir. Here. Okay. All good. I'm like, oh, I don't expect Jason to be hurt. All right. And then just write up the answer for this one. Just check it with what you have. No, it's not going to fit in there. I'm going to write it underneath. Sorry for those of you who got really excited. I might actually do the working too. Because why not? Um, because I can do the answer, but it's not going to be nice. So for questions one and two, I'm going to just use the same UV tables. Yeah, UV tables. I don't know. UV lights. So here we go. U is equal to sine of e to the 2x plus 1. And so if I differentiate, sine goes to cosine. Then I multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is e to the 2x plus 1. Then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. Okay, All right. I'm just going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to write this as 2e to the cosine of Okay, so what I did was I differentiated sine to go to cosine and then I differentiated the inside which is itself and then I differentiated the power which is once again 2 Okay that's the first function, and then the second function. Second function's a little nicer. X squared, yeah, and, and thanks, Max. Yes, I'll do the working. Um, if I differentiate, I just get 2x. And in fact, I can use this information for questions 2 and 1 and 2. So, you know, let's do that. Questions 1 and 2. So, question 1, if dash of x is the product rule, so... So differentiate the first, so that's u dash, which is this thing here. Yes, it looks horrifying. And up until this week, you would never imagine that this is something you would, you know, spend your time doing. Differentiate the first, then write the second. And I like to make the, the outside brackets kind of like, you know, stand out sometimes. Okay, differentiate the first, write the second plus write this differentiate the second and then write the first sine of e to the 2x plus 1 oh. okay i'm just going to get rid of that part of the bracket okay so this part here is u dash this part here is u this part here is v this part here is v dashed Sorry, I thought these would be in purple. All right. Okay, so hopefully that's what you've got there. And then question two is just the division of this. So fortunately, well, I am going to take a bit of a shortcut because I can. So the division of this is the top part
Oh no, I'm sorry guys. I thought I could do something. Maybe I can't. Alright, I'm going to have to write it out again. I thought I could cheat and just use half of it. But, no. So, the top is going to stay the same. Because it's u dash b, which is this. The only thing that's different is there's a minus sign, and then it's v dash u. And all I need to do is put the second thing squared, which is, you know, um, okay, so since you're timesing everything, no matter which order I put the things on either side of the plus, but where the plus is, is really important, because that plus there, you know, it doesn't matter, but here, the minus, I need to make sure that on the left-hand side is u dash v and not v dash u, right? And that's kind of important. Okay, Emma, yeah, I've got some working as well, yeah. Okay, so for me, um, in both of these questions, um, these minus sign and this plus sign, you know, are the only major difference. But what I've got to remember is u dash v is on the left-hand side of that plus sign. And that's the only thing. If I rearrange on this part, it doesn't matter, but I... Uh, I okay, take... Yeah. Yeah, take my word for it. When in doubt, don't... Um, what's it called? When in doubt, don't simplify. And just check your working for how it is. Okay. U, U dashed... V, V, no, that's not V, V dashed, and um, what we're going to do is, we're going to do questions three and four. Cool. Question three and four. All right. I'm really trying, guys. All right, questions three and four. Here we go. Nope. So what is u and v? So cosine of e to the x squared and sine of 2x. Okay, so let's write them down. Okay, so cosine of e to the x squared and sine of 2x. Let's differentiate. So cosine differentiates to negative sine. The inside stays the same. Then I multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is itself. Then I multiply by the derivative of inside, which is 2x. Okay, and then v dashed, the derivative is cosine of 2x multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is 2. Okay, and then question 3 is f dashed of x is u dashed. I'm going to just write it as negative. 2x e to the x squared times sine of e to the x squared times the first, which is sine of 2x. So u dash times v minus v dashed, which is 2 cosine of x times u, which is cosine of e to the x squared, all over, oh no, sorry, we're still doing question three, so 
that's plus. Okay, so that's that's not quotient rule just yet. So, so I apologize for that. I'm really, I used to be able to move things, guys. Now I don't know how to move things. All right, you guys can deal with it being slightly off off center. Okay, question four is exactly the same thing. So let's write it again. Differentiate the first, which is this part here. Write the second, but this time it's a minus. And then differentiate the second. Then write the first. And the only difference is now these are divided by v squared, which is sine squared 2a. Boom. All right. Um, so I am going to leave it there. Please let me know if you have any questions. Sorry if I fumbled around a bit. Um, but hopefully you've picked up on product rule and quotient rule. And you're comfortable using the bracket rule and subsequently the chain rule, even though our notation situation is not perfect just yet. I'll show you some cool stuff in the coming weeks. Um, just keep an eye out for um, what your teachers are saying about um, how school is going to be. Also, I'm going to put up a quiz for this on Education Perfect um, tomorrow, so make sure you do that for me. Um, that's really important. Um, everyone's going to be doing it, so yeah, give it a go. I think it would be really awesome. Um, oh, you're welcome, Sam and Lucy and Mustafa. You guys are really welcome. You're welcome, Max, Emma. Okay, guys, see you later, Charlotte. I'm ending the stream. No one's asking questions. <laughs>